Yes, indeed. And Maria Colfer, what was your reaction, your, your takeaway from that uh, PMQs? Well, it was clear that while uh, Keir Starmer was criticising uh, the Rwanda plan, he doesn't actually have a plan of his own. I think he uses that to detract from the fact that um, while we've seen a reduction in the number of small boats crossings, the lowest number in six years, Labour have been pretty clear that if they come into government, they will scrap all the progress that we're making and we'll be back to square one with uh, a rise and an increase in the number of illegal crossings. Well, that's interesting because we want to bring your questions into this discussion. It's all about your PMQs, this. Uh, thank you. We've got some great ones uh, in already. Keep sending them, gbviews at gbnews.com. And we love finding out not just your first name, but where you're from, too. Uh, and to Maria's point, Stephanie Peacock mm -hmm. from Labour, Bruce has been in touch to say, what would Starmer do to stop the boats? We've been very clear. We've got a plan. We're going to tackle the criminal gangs. That's why people are getting on the boats in the first place. We're going to set up a new police unit. We're going to recruit a thousand caseworkers to process people and send them back where they're not eligible. We've got a plan, and it's clear that this Rwanda scheme is simply unworkable. But the problem you've got, Stephanie Cock, if it works before the election, how can you then get rid of it? Well, it depends on your definition of what works. You know, the Supreme Court have said only a hundred people are eligible to be sent to Rwanda. There's 160,000 people in a black backlog. So I think it comes back to what works, and I simply mm. don't think this does. And Maria Coulter, your problem is that uh, many of your colleagues on the back benches don't like the idea it's not hard enough. I mean, as many, it only needs 30 or so Tory MPs tonight to sink the plan. What's your message to them? And do you understand why they're so worried? Well, the Rwanda plan is only one small part of our uh, plan to tackle small boats. And actually, we're already doing uh, much of what the Labour Party claim is, is their plan. Uh, we're already uh, processing claims. We've cleared the backlog. There's only about 4% left of that backlog. Uh, we are tackling uh, the criminal gangs. Thousands have been uh, uh, investigated as part of that. And we are stopping the crossings. You know, we've, we've set returns over 26,000 people. Um, so we're already doing that work. So Labour really doesn't have a plan. But the point is, and this is what Phil from South Shields has written in to say you've both come up with perfectly good answers but this is the perception from people watching or listening at home the only reason the rwanda scheme isn't working is because we have politicians on both sides of the house that don't have the courage to do what is needed and this is the problem isn't it? you say well you've got a plan there doesn't their plan doesn't work but people are like well is anyone going to be able to sort this out i know and i understand the frustration the fact of the matter is though the government have wasted nearly 400 million pounds of taxpayers money and they have sent more cabinet ministers to Rwanda than they have migrants. It isn't a workable plan, and I just don't think a lot of the public think it is. Are there politicians on both sides of the house? And that was what I found interesting from Phil from South Shields, because Rishi Sunak's point is that this is just the Labour Party getting in the way, they have no plan. But, but his argument is politicians on both sides of the House of Commons are a problem to, to dealing with what is necessary to stop the boats. Well, we are making progress in stopping those boats. So the boats... Do you think, low... well, what are, there's people in your own party, yeah, as Phil I... says, and, and, and in Steph's party that perhaps uh, squeamish about it too. How much of a problem is that for you when there are some people, and, and you know, we, we know it's going to happen tonight. You've got one group saying, oh, no amendments. You've got another group saying, uh, more amendments, please. Yeah, I mean, the Rwanda issue is, is one small part of the whole overall package in, in reducing those small boat crossings. And we are making progress. You know, we had the lowest number in over six years uh, uh, crossing, uh, a 50% reduction in the last half of the year. Mm. So we want to reassure your, your viewers that actually the Rwanda scheme is, is one part of it, but we're progress is being made already, which would be undone. Mm. Keir Starmer's been very clear about this. All of that, the processing, the tackling the gangs, uh, you know, Steph talks about it, but he has been clear he would scrap all of that and it'd be back to square yeah. one of just a free-for-all. Uh, oh. Steph, Steph yeah. if I may, yeah. uh, Ryan, a viewer, Ryan, says, we've wasted two years arguing about Rwanda. Why can't we just send all back to France when they, uh, you know, many boats arriving for the past few days well, on the south coast? Think, send them back. I think if it was that easy, that, you know, I don't think that is a solution, but there's no doubt we do need to work cross-border and Keir has already been having those conversations and if we win the election he will have to you know will have to draw up those plans and have to have those conversations but the fact of the matter is returns have collapsed 50 percent under this government compared to the last Labour government and we haven't been in power for 14 years it is this Conservative government that has lost control of the borders. I'm going to come to Maria now with a question from Chris because the events of last night were difficult for your party um Governing parties do, from time to time, have rebellions. They're uncomfortable. Uh, you lost Lee Anderson and Brendan Clark-Smith last night. So Chris has uh, been in touch to ask, I guess it's only a question for you, who will Rishi Sunak replace Lee Anderson and Brendan Clark-Smith with? Both new MPs from the mm -hmm. Red Wall, very different seats to, to, to the one that you represent yeah. in Lewis. Um, 
when we're going to see those appointments and who, who should it be? Well, I mean, obviously it's not my uh, uh, place to tell the Prime Minister who to appoint, but I think we have got some real talent. We saw Dean Russell there asking a very uh, important mm. question at PMQs. About his own uh, health. Yeah, and he's a very popular guy, so to try and re unite uh, uh, colleagues uh, on all sides of the debate, Dean Russell is, is someone who could, you know, who has that potential. We've got Justin Tomlinson, an amazing campaigner. We've got Deanna Davidson, you know, mm. who I think, you know, she's not standing again, so she has time uh, to be able to, to do... Uh, you know, being a deputy chairman is quite a busy role, time to get around the country. So we've got some amazing talent on our side. Do you worry, though, that these, those two Red Wall MPs resigned last night? And, and this is it's almost the party, your party, losing connection with that, that those, those voters who backed the Tories in 2019 and may vote Labour next time. So I'm not in a Red Wall seat, but I'm a Brexiteer. I voted for Brexit. I voted to take back control. And I am supporting the, the Rwanda uh, bill because it does disapply the Human Rights Act. It does have the ability for ministers to overrule uh, court decisions. And on top of the progress we're already making, you know, I talked about the Albanian crossings mm. are down 90%. Uh, you know, we are sending people back, 26,000 people. The Rwanda is the last chunk uh, that would actually put people off, act as a deterrent. And I've worked in Rwanda. So, um, you know, I've spent two, you know, two summers either teaching English or, or nursing. And I really feel uncomfortable with the way people talk and down you were Rwanda. safe there? Sorry? It was a safe country? It was safe there, yeah, and okay. absolutely. And I just I feel uncomfortable sometimes about the way we talk down Rwanda. OK. I'm going to widen this debate mm. um, out a bit. Shelley has been in touch. And we've, we've heard something quite representative of what's gone on today. Obviously, you have different visions of what Britain should look like, different uh, solutions, and you're going to attack your opponents. But Shelley has messaged to say, when are the House, the House of Commons, going to tackle the problems instead of constantly pointing the finger of blame at each other? And this is a really hard question because it is natural to say, well, they're rubbish and we're better. Mm. But is there a way we can do politics in a bit of a better way? I think that's a really good question. And actually, PMQs is probably the most adversarial. And as Maria <laughs> said, you know, we saw that really important question from Dean Russell. The first question, indeed, was about dementia. Um, so this it is a forum where you can raise some really important constituency issues that affect, you know, ordinary people and indeed MPs themselves. Um, but it's absolutely right. People do want us to talk about the issues. And while there's no doubt people are concerned about Rwanda and immigration, they're also really concerned concerned about the cost of living and the bills are going up, the fact that mortgages have gone up and how they're going to pay for things at the end of the month. Too much punch and Judy? Yeah, and PMQs isn't really reflective. I mean, I just came from the Women's Health Summit that we held this morning, mm. highlighting the work we're doing, and Sarah Brickcliffe uh, highlighted that in her question. And we highlighted the work we're doing cross-party. You know, Carolyn Harris, uh, the work on the menopause, Olivia Blake, the work on, on miscarriage. Uh, Sarah Brickcliffe is doing a huge work uh, in campaigning for better pregnancy yeah. care. I think the public don't see that. It doesn't yes. make the news. But maybe they should, actually. Maybe but they maybe should. Maybe there's yeah. a way that... The but the media, whole... media won't focus on the Women's Health Summit today. It will all be the Rwanda vote, so people yes. do miss the cross-party work. There, there was some positive news in yeah, there. I, think I read the, about the, it this morning. Indeed, yeah. and also in, in the PMQs, the PM talked about protection for whistleblowers. Yes. Which I think was most, most interesting. He, uh, there's work been done by Alex Chalk at the, the Justice Department to, mm. to protect people, to, to blow the whistle on, on, on mm. the post office situation, other, other big, uh, big uh, uh, rows. So. What do you think at home? Do you like... Prime Minister's question time. Do you feel enlightened? Does it give you more confidence in your politicians who represent you? Because there's this great divide there. Easy. When people say, do you, do you like politicians, everyone says no. And then when you ask them, do you like your own MP? And they're quite yeah. favourable. What's it like standing up at the debate box and looking at your enemy shouting at you and your mates are behind you? They classically you? say the enemy's behind you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure whether that's true. Um, of course it can, be, it can be intimidating, but you're there. You've got a really important platform. And I always think I'm there to give a voice to people who don't always have one. And and I find my constituency service service surgery is really interesting and fascinating. Mm. I've done a big campaign on the miners' pensions, for example, on dangerous yeah. driving, and they're things that were brought to me from people from Barnsley yeah. that really affect their lives. Yeah. Yeah. How, how do you, do, Maria? Do you find a friend on the labour benches and look at them all the time? Yeah, no, absolutely. And we do, you know, particularly in the health team. You know, I really would like to take the politics out of health completely mm. because you look at all four nations. Wales run uh, run by Labour, SNP run in Scotland, Northern Ireland is not a functioning assembly at the moment, and we run the health service in England. We all face the same issues, and if we could put politics aside, we might actually make more progress. Maria, a question which is specifically to you, it is from Dave. Uh, would you ask Rishi Sunak, you are Rishi Sunak for the purposes of this debate, if he <laughs> thinks Reform UK are a real threat to the Tories? I mean, come on, of course they are. What are you going to do about Tell it? Yeah, perhaps polls. not in Lewis. Oh, well, I don't know. We've, oh, got, right, we've got a big chunk. You know, there was a, a chunk of people who did vote for Brexit in Lewis, 
this. Um, yeah, absolutely. People, when they're frustrated about taking back control, control of our borders, uh, are thinking about reform. And what I say to people, and the poll showed this from the Telegraph um, only a couple of days ago, they're not going to win a single seat. And if you want us to continue the progress on things like immigration, the plan is working, maybe not as fast as people want it to, but it's working, then you've got to stick with us, or else it's back to square one with Labour. And Mr. Stuff, surely reform is a gift to your party, isn't it? Well, the Brexit party did very well in my seat. I think it was a unique election with different challenges to the ones we will face at the next election. The Labour Party are taking nothing for granted because the only poll that matters is the poll on General Election Day. I mean, I don't know when the date is. I don't know if Maria is privy to that. <laughs> When's the date, Maria? <laughs> we'll find out. Yeah, we'll find out. But the Prime Minister said it's, you know, it's towards the end of the year, so um, it's it's not something that's imminent. Um, but yeah, absolutely, reform. You know, mm. that they are. You know, people are attracted would, to them. And I and I think uh, Stephanie Peacock mm. from Labour. The real threat to you, I don't know if, if you'll acknowledge it, is that people are like, well, don't really like him, don't really like them. It's people who think, I'm not going to bother voting for, for, for either of them. Well, we've got to inspire, we've got to put an offer together. But, you know, I ran the Tamworth by-election, for example, and the only way we won that is with switchers. We simply wouldn't have won it unless people switched from Conservative to Labour. And that is because we are building confidence and we do have an offer for people. And we've got to keep making that case because we're taking nothing for granted. And that's a real fight. But Maria Coalfield, back to today, tonight, the party your government could lose primary legislation. That could trigger a Labour vote of no confidence in the government as soon as, well, tomorrow or being, being tabled maybe next week. Will you win tonight? Well, we've got some amendments as well. So the third reading comes towards the end of the day. So there'll be some further amendments we'll be voting on. Um, and, they and won't get through, though. It's all about the third reading. No, it is all about the third reading. We're confident that we, you know, the, those who've uh, voted against uh, the legislation last night, you know, have made some valid points. Uh, it will go to the House of Lords and it will come back. There's a chance to, to look at amendments. Um, and the Prime Minister is, is in listening mode. But we're confident for third reading that we will get that through. So you could amend, confident? sorry, forgive me, you could amend the, the, the bill after the House of Lords. Well, that's, that's standard practice for any legislation. There's often amendments uh, following the House of Lords, and the House of Lords will obviously be a challenge in itself. I'm going to ask you both this. Would you bet your mortgage on Rishi Sunak leading you into the next election? Um, yes. Stephanie Peacock, I mean, because you, you get to look at it from the from the other side, as it I were. I mean, surely they can't put... A th is it a third elected Prime Minister? I mean, I've, I've lost track. I mean, I think we need a general election, really, and we oh, need it And there soon. was a question on that... <laughs> My question to the Prime Minister would be, will you now resign and call a general election? That's what Warren said. But you think we've got to wait till November? Look, we've got really important work. You've seen the inflation figures uh, today. We have halved inflation, but it's not a done deal. Uh, we, that's important to people's uh, purses at home. Uh, immigration, we're making progress, and we want to get that final uh, nail uh, to, in the Rwanda plan. Um, so we've got work to be done before an election happens. You have both been fantastic guests, Stephanie Peacock from Labour and Health Minister, uh, Maria Caulfield, thank you very much for coming in. We hope you'll be back again. Another all-woman panel. We might invite another bloke <laughs> in next week, just for you, Chris. And you'll be watching and listening to PMQ's Live with Claudia Priero and me, Christopher Hope. We're back next week. Please do tune in and think about your best questions Absolutely. now. Sell them in next week. Don't go anywhere. Next up, it's Good Afternoon Britain with Tom and Emily. <laughs>